All right, so at this point, I've got approximately 68 lines of code, and the result is something like this. I've got this home screen and about and a contact, which I haven't done anything with. And what we're doing today is not going to be mission critical that it's going to be required next time. Today we're just playing with this new tool of jQuery Mobile. We're getting used to, well, we're going to write this code, we're going to run the code, we're going to test it, change it. I know how it's all going to end. You know, I've already read the last page of the book. I know how this is going to end. You don't know how it's going to end yet. But we're going to go eventually toward, as I've shown before, we're making this app. We're making CBDB, the comic book database app, which is going to store data in a database. Sounds very boring, but what we're doing is we're saving something fun like, you know, a comic book, photos, text, barcode, scans, geolocation, all of that. Before we get to any of that, we have to spend time in part one of the class making an interface. So we're playing with jQuery Mobile today. We'll do it a little bit more. On Tuesday, we're then going to start to plan and brainstorm what our app will be. And then we'll start to write the code to put it into structure. And then we'll get into design with CSS. And then we'll get into interactivity with JavaScript. And that's going to take then a while. So let's do a little bit more here in terms of, well, structure-wise. Let's say in my About screen, I wanted to have content here of a variety of different things to read about. I could put structure or content here in terms of just a bunch of paragraphs of content, but because I've got jQuery Mobile, I can create these interesting interface elements, like drop-down menus, or pop-up boxes, or collapsible widgets and such. So let's take a little detour. Go to your web browser and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. Let's go to the official manual of everything that we're looking at today. I'm telling you of like 5% of the different codes that jQuery Mobile is. Well, here's where you get 100% of it. Here's where you look up exactly how it all works, how, uh, how to troubleshoot it, and what are all the possibilities. Here's where I look up, well, what are the icons? The instructor said that there were 50 different icons. Let me see them all. We'll see them here. The instructor said there was a way to make your own animation. How do I do it? It's going to be in here. So jQueryMobile.com. I believe it's on the first page of the syllabus, but here it is also. And we're going to look at various aspects of this site as we go on, but just to very briefly look at what I want to look at today. On the top button over here, go to Demos. Let's go to the demonstrations of how these things work. And we want to look at the, the code of the latest one we're, we're working with, 145. Remember in my code, in our code we wrote uh, href equals 145. So go to the 145 demos, the latest version. On the left side you can find what you're looking for, or at the bottom here too. If you scroll down in the bottom area, there's a CSS framework and there's uh, icons right here. Let's look at this, for example. Under CSS framework, let's go look at the icons. You get a full explanation of what capabilities you have regarding icons. A set of built-in icons. They're in SVG and PNG format. How to use them is we saw here data-icon equals and then the name of the icon. The names of the icons are here. If I want to add this icon, I do data role equals, I mean data icon equals action. And I get that icon. Let's see, here's some arrows. Arrow D, arrow UL for up to the left. Data-icon audio gives you a little speaker. Bullet points is bullets, a little simple calendar. So there's all of these icons that are built in for common actions. Like if you were to see in an app this icon, what do you think it would do? It would do a calendar, save, save dates or look up a calendar. Okay, if you saw that icon, what do you think that would do? Take a picture. Take a picture, yeah, so that, those things make sense. If you saw this icon, however, this one at the top, what do you think that does? 
A lot of, a lot of opinions, yeah, because that one's not that common. Perhaps I heard share. That's what I would think. You share this. I'm going to go share this on Facebook. I'm going to send it on Facebook or something. But whatever, whatever you said would would make sense. Perhaps this is the problem with, you know, pictographic communication. Uh, someone believes, okay, well, this means information. This means don't click it. Uh, this one means, you know, uh, look, look down, or this means download. Uh, so communication with graphics could be universal, or it could be, or it could cause uh, confusion. So that's why then you can create your own icons. What is this, uh, without looking what it is right here, what is this icon right here? <laughs> it's, the, it's the sun, obviously, right? This is the button that I press to, take, to get a tan. You know, it's, it's a gear where I can go to my settings or my options. So a lot of them are kind of obvious. Uh, here's the power button, little star. Well, OK, obviously that's a star, but what do you think that is? What do you do with that in an app, maybe? Maybe make a favorite. Well, why don't I use the heart? I saw a heart here also. Yeah, maybe do a heart. So there's more than one meaning for icons oftentimes, and there's no wrong answer perhaps unless it does cause confusion in your users and uh, then they, uh, they don't know what they're doing. To me, this one's really funny because it's supposed to be a little video camera, but it looks like a, like a duck or something. There's the bill of the duck and he's got a square head. It's a camera. So okay, the answer is I'll make my own icons. And there is a way to do it, and the documentation will explain to you how to make changes if you want to do changes. We're not going to do that just yet, but notice if I want to make my own icon, uh, there's no skull icon, so it shows you here. You're going to make your own icon, you're going to define your own CSS code, saying that it's going to be my icon. They should have been obvious and called this skull. UI icon skull, because it's a skull, they call it my icon. And the icon is over here somewhere, the graphic. So we'll do this later, but there's a way for us to make our own icons, besides the 50 built-in ones. Positioning. We didn't set a position, it just appeared on the left. If you'd like to, you can set a uh, data icon pos, or POS, data icon position. Uh, we can position the icon to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom. What else here? There's another one here. Maybe I want a button that is only an icon. Use no text as a value for the icon position to create an icon only. So that's saying, using data-icon pos, set that to no icon, uh, no text, and it'll just be an icon without text. We can play with shadows and colors and all of that. Let's go back. Um, in the documentation here, try to find the screen where it tells you about how the animations work. Remember, we made an animation from going to the home screen to the about screen. See if you can find it here in the documentation. Transitions, exactly. We used data dash transition and we added an animation. So, right here, pages and navigation transitions. This then gives you the details about what are the possibilities. The jQuery mobile framework includes a set of CSS based transition effects that can be applied to any page link or form submission with Ajax navigation. That's saying basically, okay, uh, we can make animations. Uh, if we add data dash transition um, fade it will look like a certain way or pop and then it gives you the preview here's how it looks like if you go to a brand new page pop looks like that it'll pop into view if it's if you're going to a dialog box it'll pop into view if you've got um, slide up on a page it will slide up if you set it to a dialog, the dialog slides up. Creating custom transitions, it requires a little bit more setup. 
But here then is a list of these common transitions that we may use throughout our app. Or no transition. Data transi data dash transition, none. And then there's no animation, no transition. OK, so my point is, in the About screen, I want to create a, a widget or an element where it opens up to show you more content. Going into uh, jQuery Mobile, browsing around a little bit in this widgets area, here's about making toolbars, navbars, tabs, panels, pop-ups. What I'm looking for is, is called collapsible set. Um, you might not have known that it was called that, but maybe you figure, uh, figure it out by browsing what is here. Um, at the moment, the unofficial homework is if you want something to do over the weekend, go to this site and look at some of these things here. Play with some of these uh, codes and see what it works like. Because we're not going to use every aspect of jQuery Mobile. We don't need to. We don't need to have, you know, uh, maybe we don't need to use grids, maybe, or, or tabs or whatever. So we don't need to learn everything. People sometimes think, as a beginner, that for me to learn a computer language, I need to know every code, all 200 codes. Not really. It is impressive to know that, and it's impressive to regurgitate it and know all of the code. But it's not necessary. You might not need all of it always. What is impressive is that you know how to look it up and reason it out and find the answer and apply it. So if you memorize all of the code of how tables r work and all of that, great. But how often will you do it? Maybe you learn the one that you do most often, and then you come back and look up, what was the code again for a pop-up? Oh, here it is, and let me use it. Let's go look at our collapsible set widget. An accordion is created in jQuery Mobile by grouping a series of individual, individual collapsibles into a set. So here's my idea. We're going to have something like this, where we're going to have something that opens up, and then I'm going to see content. Something else opens up, or that one, or that one. And in these elements, we can have anything. Text, pictures, video, even a collapsible element in a collapsible element. So this is what I want to create. And oftentimes, you will either see the explanation, or you will say, View Source. And clicking that will show you what the code looks like. We can copy and paste, but we will do it the hard way, which is the better way to learn, by writing it manually. But looking at it in theory, OK, we've got div, tag, data role, collapsible set. Notice the spelling. Data theme, I haven't talked about that yet. Div data role collapsible h3 section 1 p paragraph. I'm the collapsible content for section 1. End of the div, which was from here to here. Then another div from here to here for the second section, and another div for the third one. And the whole thing is encompassed in a div, in a division. So that's what I want in my case as well. The result of, is this, section 1, I'm in I'm the collapsible content. Opens and closes on its own. It's got effects, glows, and all of that, completely built in. It's then up to me to put the content. So based on the example here, we're going to start to write this code. It's OK to put it side by side if you'd like in the about section which number was the first or second which number of what section. section 2 the about section so in the about section uh, in my case at about line 46 is where my article starts and i've got h2 middle about uh, well in my case i'm going to remove that button that I had there. Let's see, let's make it really simple. In the in the article of the about section at approximately line 47, I'm gonna create a new div here. H2 
a collapsible set in jQuery mobile with a div division. The documentation says that to create a collapsible set, it needs a data role of collapsible set. So there's a div that we just created, attribute data role, data dash role, collapsible set. Collapsible set. That thing about data theme and such, skip that for the moment. I'll explain what that is in a moment. But we need this, this larger element, the, the big container, data role, collapsible set. Each individual clickable drawer or accordion that opens up, then we see is its own pair of divs with a data role of collapsible and then the content inside of it. Okay, so inside of the collapsible set, a new div pair, a new division. Yes? Why is it necessary to repeat the command? It is necessary because that's what the specification says. It's programmed in a way that in order if you want to have this to happen, this is the way you have to do it. Because I thought that once you had the div and you gave it, that was a command in itself. And then you have the end of the div, I thought that maybe in between the spacing, that's where you would put whatever you wanted to happen. Yes, and that's what is happening right here. You've got that first div that starts here and then it ends here. And then everything in the middle is what you want to happen. But what we want to further happen is more divisions of content. The whole thing is a division separating from the rest of the content, but then we've got little divisions inside of it. So this one's got a data role simply of collapsible. So the idea basically, if before filling any content, if I copy and paste this, like let's say four times, We've got this div that ends the whole widget. The whole thing is a collapsible set. And I want one little division, one drawer right there, and then another one, and another one, and another one. And each one needs its own data role collapsible, its own opening and closing tags. And it's just a matter of putting the content that we want in between each of those. Yes. Let me confirm that. Did I misspell that? Uh, nope. It seems to say collapsible set without a dash. I think for a different kind of um, so it does go away the underlining, but I and we'll confirm it in a moment, but just by going with the, what I see in the documentation, it doesn't seem to have the, the dash. So then each of these is its own collapsible, and then in order for the text to be on the button, it needs an H tag, a heading tag, and we saw there we were H3. What would be some content that might be useful to someone in an about page? Like what are the different types of about information someone might want in, to see? Who are we? What else? Anything in, interesting or you might think about in an about page? Okay, company story. 
So you see I'm creating these different things that will open up to have more of this content. There's a div that will then be full of the company story info or content inside of the div of the collapsible set. The content itself then it follows inside of paragraphs or images or links. We are a nonprofit organization, blah, 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 whatever. Just putting some content to show you what would go in there. Another paragraph for the company story. We were founded in 1892 and blah, blah, blah. Paragraphs, images, tables, anything you might already know in HTML, all of that can go inside of this collapsible set in a collapsible sub element. It might not be quite complete yet, but if I look at it in the browser and I go to the About screen, there we go. We've got this, um, this thing that opens and closes. This would be very complex to set up in, uh, manually, but with jQuery Mobile, the jQuery Mobile framework, Using, you knowing the right data roles and knowing the right syntax, knowing the right way to write this stuff, we can create quickly create this. What's that? Section three. Sure. Go ahead and add that. So try to fill in those other two or more collapsible elements. Put whatever you'd like. Working, anyone need a little help so far? All of these H's should work the same because it's expecting uh, that whenever you have a heading in a div with a, data, with a certain data role, it'll treat it a certain way. So in a sense, it, it sort of doesn't matter which H numbers you use here, but I would recommend to keep it as three because um, 
we have h1 at the very top in the header. And then we have h4 in the, in the bottom of the footer. So we are free to use h2 and h3 within the main article. Uh, so if it's working so far, uh, let's go on and do a little bit more here. Uh, so you see what we've got uh, in this screen. We've got the who we are and company story, etc. Well, maybe also in the contact page, I want to do something. Now, in, in my case, contact has been very, very basic. I've, I've ignored it. Uh, so just for the little bit of practice, maybe I, uh, I will sort of structure it just a bit. Um, because home looks nice. I've got home and navbar and everything and about is close, but then contact is completely barren. So just for a little practice, instead of copying and pasting, we'll do it the long way just for the practice. Uh, so in the section of section three here, uh, I want to, or screen three, I want to add this structure. So if you've still got a section of contact that looks very basic, We'll, we'll upgrade it a little bit. If yours is already ready, then uh, just wait just one moment. So again, it's, it's header, it's article, it's footer, remember these are the basic building blocks to any of these screens. Some of these are optional, actually. You might not always need a footer. That one's optional. You often do need an article, at least. Header could be optional as well. And we'll see why we might want to do, this, do those at some point. These all need a data role. What's the data role for header? Header. What's the data role for the footer? What's the data role for the article? Role. Trick question. Yes, it's role. Not data role. Role. Main. And then class dash quotes UI or equals quotes UI dash content. That's the one that is very different. That's why perhaps doing it manually once or twice to remind you that article is different. It doesn't have a data role. It has role and it has class. Up in the header, uh, as I said, we want to have an H1 for something, uh, and this is contact. Down on the footer, what do we want on the footer? Which heading? H4 is usually enough, unless you plan on having a lot of content 
in the main article, maybe H5, but H4 usually works well. And, and here, let's do something here. Copyright 2018. I want to add the copyright symbol down at the bottom. Well, we have, with some code, we can write the copyright symbol, and it looks like this. You need the ampersand, which is Shift 7, the and symbol, copy, semicolon. That will become the copyright symbol. The and symbol, the ampersand, which is Shift 7. The word copy, no space, because then it doesn't work the word copy, and then semicolon, no space on that, or then it doesn't work. And that gets converted into a copyright symbol. That'd be a nice note to add there. Copyright symbol as an HTML code. So you could look that up. List of all HTML symbols. I want to look up trademark. I want to look up um, maybe like a, a degree symbol, like you know, 70 degrees. I want to add maybe a cent symbol or a euro currency symbol. We are actually, remember, using UTF-8 in the character set at the very beginning. So that's why we can do something like this. We can have the various symbols. For fun, if you go look at that contact screen, You've got that copyright. Well, for fun, we have these other ones. You know, we could do ampersand yen. That'll create the yen symbol. There it is, yen. OK, we've got euro, the euro currency symbol right there. I don't have them all memorized because it's all um, because there's thousands of them, but I think we've got cents. Just cent. Get the cent symbol. These are just off the top of my head, and I, if I need to know more of them, I go look it up. I go online and I search HTML character codes or HTML symbol codes, and there you'll see a list of all of them. Like, for example, I want to do something like Copyright 2018, Olay Industries. And wouldn't it be nice if I had the little accent mark on Olay? Well, there is that. There's a cute E. Acute, how does it go again? Acute E. No, wait a minute. It's it's e acute. Yeah, there it is. So it's ampersand e acute ampersand or semicolon, and that creates a little accent mark on the letter e. So yes, a acute would put it on the letter a. I want to do the upside down exclamation point. If I want to do Japanese letters, they're all in a code. Yes? Could you even just scroll up a little bit for me to see where I put. Let me finish my thought here and then I'll do that. Yes. So here then, um, down in the footer, we've got the. Uh, the footer is not getting stuck to the bottom. Well, that needs the data position fixed. So that's that's my code there so far. I'm just kind of throwing a lot of uh, symbols there for no reason just to play with that. I've got a footer, I've got a header, main article area. I want to add another jQuery mobile widget in a moment, but here's where we're at so far. Question. What was the data position fixed for? OK, without data position, the footer is way up at the top. Um, With the data position, it fixes it to the bottom. Is this a good spot here for the 
what you were looking at. Or do you know at do you know at approximately what line number? This new section starts right here. Section. So what I want to do in this article, I want to add a new element. I want to add a list view. Go over to jQueryMobile.com and go find the list view widget. Go get a preview of it before we do it here. This is another way to represent data as a list view. It's going to be sort of like you know, on the roster here where it's rows of stuff. Not exactly a table, but it's a view. It's a list view. Go over to jQueryMobile.com. We'll check it out, and then we'll add it to our project. It's called List View. So let's see how that's going to work. If I go back to jQueryMobile.com. List view. It's here in the widgets. List view. A list view is coded as a simple unordered list or an ordered list with a data role of list view attribute and has a wide range of features. So if I want a read-only an unordered list of things. I can view source to see what that looks like. If I want it with numbers, okay, I can see how that looks like. If I want links, I want to be able to click on BMW and it goes to the screen BMW. So I'll view source. How, does, how is that done? I have these other abilities here, such as inset. The difference here, data dash inset equals true attribute. Now it's not touching the edge of the screen. These up here would be touching the edge of the, of the device. This one will have a little bit of edge, and it's rounded off to the sides. All of that is editable, but then the basics looks like that. So the buttons that can be clicked that are grouped together like a list. We could do something really advanced here as a filter. To make a list filterable, simply add the data filter true attribute to the list. The framework will then append a search box above the list and add the behavior to filter out the items that don't contain. So I'll look at the list, I'll look at the code in a moment. But the idea is I got a list of a bunch of things and I only want to concentrate on a couple that start with the letter C. So if I start to type C, everything else will be removed except for things with a C. That's pretty amazing. If I look at how to do that. It's not that complex. It is a little bit of code, but it's very built into the whole system. Question. So what if you wanted to combine this um, that allow people to enter in their own entries, not from a list? Of, um, yeah, you're taking it one step further now, which we will cover, which is, OK, we want user input. We want a person to, for them to submit a list of groceries and then to, to filter it. So we'll cover that. It takes more effort because it requires a form and a place to save the data somewhere and then to retrieve it. So here's the opposite. We can have a filter reveal. If there is a known set of data, a person can then start to search the data and it will populate with what's in the field of data. Again, if I start typing in C, I get all of the uh, things in the database basically that start with C. And then if I start to ch uh, further go in there, it filters itself. How you actually do it is not super complex. We haven't covered forms yet, which we will. Here's the basic code. Here's our list. This is linked together somehow by reading the example code. And then we have a way to filter. This would be very useful later on once we actually start making our app and saving data to a database. How much of the data do I have? Do I want to filter out? To, do I want to view? We can have dividers. So there's a section 
info section info not clickable yes clickable this is the one we're going to do I want to use this as uh, for my contact screen maybe I want to have a section about uh, you know social media and I'll have a couple of links to our Facebook to our Twitter maybe over here then with our email with our home address or something so by looking at this source code the big idea is we have bullet points well these obviously don't look like bullet points at all and that's the magic of using the framework that it's gonna take something simple as bullet points and upgrade it to something more interesting or powerful we just need to know that the, the, the shortcuts unordered list bullet points with a data role of list view. Is it inset so that it doesn't touch the edge? True. What theme or style, a style, then a list item, a bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. A bullet point with a data role of list dash divider mail. And then each individual item of the bullet points uh, of the list view item is its own list item and uh, with a link. I want to do this one in the about or in the contact section. So starting off here, in the article, unordered list, plain old bullet points with some list items. Four of them. This would normally just be plain old bullet points with four bullet points. An ordered list will upgrade it to, with a data role. List view. That's the only required one. The other ones about data inset is optional, meaning do you want the edges to be in, inside or not? I like the way it looks as data inset tr true. You can choose not to put it, or you can put false. Data inset true. Uh, we'll skip the data theme for a moment. We'll cover that deeper a little later. And then we've got these list items of actual content or dividers. The first divider, I want this to say social media. I'm going to list perhaps a few social media accounts. And another divider down here of um, um, what's that? Blog. Sure. Blog. So under social media we'll have Facebook, we'll have Twitter, under blog, maybe we'll say website. So I've got two entries in the social media section. We've got one entry in the so in the blog section. <coughs> go to my blog. Go to my website to read the blog. All of this is part of a list view. But I want this to behave like a heading, like a divider for these two things. That's when that gets another data role. Where they, where they are inconsistent here for some weird reason. List dash divider, whereas other ones ha didn't have any dash to it. So this one is a data role. List divider. Same thing for blog. Data role. List. Divider.
So it's a good idea to write your code a little bit and then test your code to see if you're on the right track. You don't want to get too far into it and then it doesn't work and you have to figure out what did you do wrong. Obviously we have an ultimate plan and result in this class, but if you're starting off it's a good idea to, to test yourself. That's what it's looking like so far. There's a little section for social media stuff. There's a section for blog stuff. These would be nice to be able to click on them. That's the next part. And according to the documentation, you simply add a link. These are not linking anywhere, but you would add an href to where you're linking to. A tag href facebook.com, for example. So the result here is when you add the a tag to, to any of these elements, then it becomes automatically clickable. That icon can be changed, but then that goes to Facebook. That should probably open in its own window so we can easily add a uh, target. So target attribute underscore blank that'll open in its own link in its own window The reason that perhaps this looks a little different than the others is two reasons. One, yes, that there's no link. So notice also this Facebook font and such looks slightly different than this one that is not a link. But the main thing that's changing is because that's got the extra data role of list divider. So if we wanted this to look exactly the same, we would have to write a little bit more custom CSS code to make it exactly the same. But the default is that anything that has the data role of list view will look different than the rest because the point of it is to look different from the rest like a divider. Oh, well, my social media and Facebook are about the same, uh, the same mm. size. size. Uh, yeah. And I don't have anything on Facebook. Well, it should uh, be something like this. Yeah, uh, no data role there on Facebook, but only the data role. Now, is it spelled, is the attribute properly there? Data role list dash divider? Yes. OK, let me, I'm curious, so let me just check your code.
No, what I was going to say was let's give Twitter a link next week. All right, everyone, so uh, you should see that as you uh, explore the different widgets that uh, are available, the different features that are available in uh, jQuery Mobile, we can build a lot of powerful features into our, into our app. So going back to jQueryMobile.com, uh, we'll do one more, then we'll wrap up for the day. Uh, we have... Let me see, where did they put it? There's one about panels. Let's see, where's panels? Side panels. Uh, panel, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, okay, yeah, so here it is. Let's do this, this other element, this widget. Uh, panel, let's go check out what panel is. 
Uh, you've probably seen apps where you, you've got the, the app and then maybe you press a button or swipe or whatever and something appears on the side. That's a side panel. Here are some examples. Click on that, pops into view. Cool. Click it here, it moves the screen over. Cool. Click here, it pushes it in a different way. So there's one where it appears on top of everything. There's one where it uh, appears below it, and there's another one slightly different. You see the difference there is that it's like off screen and it pushes into the screen, whereas reveal is like we move the top stuff away and we see the bottom stuff. It's very subtle, but overlays the obvious one. Okay, I want to do this. I want to set this up on one of my screens, any of my screens. Flexible by design, panels can be used for navigation, forms, inspectors, and more. Okay, I want it on the right side, so we'll see it on the right side. Um, the position of the panel on the screen is set by the data position attribute. The default value is to the left, meaning it will appear to the left if you don't specify anything else. The display mode for the panel is set by data display attribute. And the value by default is reveal. So if we don't put any extra values, it will automatically do this, a reveal. Where panel markup goes? Where does your code go? It says... A panel must be a sibling to the header, content, and footer elements inside a jQuery mobile page. You can add the panel markup either before or after these elements, but not in between. A panel cannot be placed outside a page, but this constraint will be removed in future versions. Okay, here's an example. It's saying uh, they, they did it slightly different in that they, they are using div data role page. What are we using? section section data role page it's equivalent this needs to be updated a little bit the way we're doing it with section is the more modern way just imagine that says section data role page okay we've got a header we've got content we've got footer okay we've seen that then we've got a div of a data role panel with its own unique ID panel content goes there so then we can link from the main content to open the side panel we're also going to change it slightly from it being a plain old div to being another tag called an aside. So uh, let's go find one of our sections of our document. We will add a brand new panel element. Uh, so back to our code. Let's add it, I guess, um, in home. We'll be fine anywhere we want it, but we'll, we'll put it in home. Let's go to the home section of our code so approximately line 14 and the documentation says in, in the example notice they've got that side panel before any of the header inside of a certain section it says technically it can be before or after so the short answer is a side panel must be part of a section it can be before your headers or after your footers, but it shouldn't be between them, is what the documentation is saying. Just to be easy, like how the example is, we'll put it at the beginning. So in our code, section, data role page, ID of home, here's our header. Before that, give yourself some space and we will create an aside. element for our side panel. You can do the note, must be part of a section. must be part of the section where you want to display it more technically. So you wouldn't add the aside outside of a section. It would sort of get lost. It would get broken from the structure of the project. So we've got an aside. This is a side panel. 
it uh, needs a data role and it needs an ID. So just by itself aside it won't do anything much except separate itself from content, but it won't behave like a side panel. So we need the data role of panel. A unique ID to reference it in links. Let's call it side panel. Very creative. And then content inside can be whatever you want. So uh, let's say we'll create a paragraph in here and we'll say, this is our side panel. It has whatever. So this is uh, part one of it. Uh, here is the actual element. It um, exists, it has some content, but if I were to run it, it should not appear anywhere yet. Not until I click something. So I'm going to make a brand new button that says open side panel or something. A new button that will then open that side panel. So we need to go down to where the article is and find where we had our first button and make another button. And we're going to link that new button to that new side panel. So inside of the article, I see, okay, middle, I see paragraph. We'll add a new button side panel. The text that will appear in the button will be side panel. There's an A tag, it's going to have an active link, so it needs an href. It's going to go to pound side panel, the ID of the side panel. I want it to look like a button, so data roll button. I want an icon, so data icon. Whatever the name of that side panel was, whatever ID I gave it, that's what I use here in the href. And uh, I see people often times uh, as, as beginners that you forget to put the, the pound sign. That's the tricky part, that it does not have the pound sign when it's ID equals whatever, but it does have the pound sign when it's href equals whatever. And since we'll do that enough, you'll most likely memorize it as you do it a bit more. There it is. Now, the button doesn't look like a button because I don't have the other data rolls yet, but it is clickable. It does open up. There's my content. If I want it to further look like a button, then it needs data roll. want an icon. Here we can do caret L. Not caret, caret. Um, which is not another kind of arrow. That's an L, not a one for left.
And so we see that result. The button has an icon. It looks like a button. You click it, it moves over there. If I wanted to change the different uh, animations for it, we saw that we had uh, that the documentation says right here. Okay. Um, display mode of the panel is set by the data display attribute. The value of the attribute defaults to reveal. Specify data display overlay for the panel to appear on top. A third mode push animates both. So that gets added to the panel. So if you wanted to change the default behavior of that panel, um, I've added then to the aside itself, I've added data dash display equals overlay. So right now the project is just kind of a mishmash of things, but the idea is that um, starting with jQuery Mobile, I mean starting with basic HTML and adding jQuery Mobile, we have something more powerful. Just to show you something here, if I were to go back and remove the connections to those libraries, so don't do this, but I'm going to go in and break the connection to all of those libraries, and when I run the project, it goes back to completely basic HTML no design, no animation, nothing. No divisions of content and everything. And all of that is coming from those libraries, those three files, which we will use throughout the course. Is jQuery the only one that uses data roll? I believe so. Other frameworks use other ones, like Angular has its own ng-whatever. So uh, data role is often for jQuery mobile, ng dash, whatever is for Angular, and there's other ones that use other sort of like prefixes. It's easy to translate to like frameworks? Mm, not quite. You use a framework f uh, because that's the one you want to, to use. It's like, you know, uh, is it easy to move from house to house? Well, I'm in a house because I like that it has you know five bathrooms or whatever. If I want a house with two bathrooms, well, I need a new house, right? It, you can't quite convert one to the other. Okay. So you could, but they're not quite designed that way because they're all kind of competitors. Like we feel our best way to do it is this way, and we feel the best way to do it is this way. So they're not quite cross compatible. The the better thing to do is you know try them all out, see which one you like, and then stick with the one you like. Yes. Div is a very generic container. Uh, remember, as I've been saying, the, the use the right tag for the right task. Uh, for a long time, div is a very generic container. It can be used to do a variety of things. When you've got hundreds of lines of code, off very quickly you can't quite tell what is this supposed to do with a simple div. So if we use some of the more modern tags, like aside, the purpose of aside is that it is side content. So I can then quickly see this is an aside, this is side content. It would work fine with classic div or with the modern aside, but I want to show the most modern versions. So this jQuery is Java? This jQuery? jQuery is a variation of JavaScript. Now, Java and JavaScript are very different, but it's JavaScript, jQuery. Yeah, jQuery Mobile is related to it. It's kind of got a longer answer. What we've been writing has been HTML, but behind the scenes, there might have been stuff happening in JavaScript and CSS that we don't need to worry about that it does for us. So I'm going to write some notes over here, then we'll wind down for a little lab time. 
um, these notes that I didn't write very many notes because we wrote it all inside of our code. But in the notepad file here, let me write some notes. Kind of a little bit of recap. jQuery mobile recap. A framework with shortcuts to create interfaces. You need to link to the library files. One CSS file and three JS files. Oh, sorry, two. Three in total. You need to use the right tags for the right task. You need to add data attributes for the right task. And very important, you need to read the documentation. Because I might show you various aspects of things, but that doesn't mean we've covered everything. So I do recommend to visit the documentation, jQueryMobile.com, and practice this. Any uh, general questions on what we've been talking about so far? We'll do individual help in a moment, but general questions on things we've talked about today? OK, well, uh, I'll wrap up this lecture. I'm going to put uh, my notes and my code into the folder. Let me remind you where to get that at. Let me just put it in there, and then I'll show you. Yeah, let me mention that in a moment. All right, everyone, before we break, let me just show you the, uh, the way to get back to the folder.